Welcome to another Taz Academy HVAC training video. Today's topic, grounding matters, why it's important and how to test for proper ground. With Total Air Supply Technical Support Manager, Randall S. Ripley. Here on the left, you see a typical residential electrical hookup uh, coming in off the pole. Uh, you go into your entrance head, go down through your meter and into your electrical panel. And over on the right, we see that uh, what the electrical panel looks like inside. You have your two bus bars, your ground and your neutral. The main panel, the G terminal on the electrical panel is where the safety ground is placed. And uh, as you see, ground and neutral are connected. Uh, in the panel, but not at the unit. L1 and L2 are line voltages. Across L1 and L2 is 240. L1 or L2 to neutral or ground will be 120. And the neutral wire is the uh, white wire here, uh, the end wire over there. There are a few common ways an electrical panel is grounded in a residential home. Uh, and the first one we're going to talk about is a grounding rod. Uh, the ground wire from the panel is run outside to a grounding rod that's driven eight feet uh, into the ground. Uh, you can have a secondary ground rod if you're bonding a furnace uh, CSST uh, setup, uh, gas piping setup, uh, but they all have to tie together to the one common uh, grounding rod. In cases where the house may set on ledge, as my house does, Grounding to your water pipe may be necessary if the following requirements are met. Water pipe coming from the street must be at least eight feet below grade and a minimum of eight feet laterally from the street. And here you see the water pipe coming through the concrete floor from the street. And Ground wire must be clamped to the pipe. The safety ground connects to the same terminal as the neutral wire at the service panel. Neutral and ground are generally connected at the electrical panel, but not at the equipment. Ground is the earth or any point in an electrical circuit that has the same potential as earth. The bare copper or green wire, depending on the wire used, is the ground. And this safety ground is for the equipment. It is not for humans. If electricity goes to that ground wire and you're holding it, uh, and it's like a bare wire, especially, it's going to shock you. The ground wire should only carry current in the case of a fault condition, such as wire insulation breakdown that occurs within electrical equipment. The safety ground is connected to the frame of a motor or appliance and provides an alternate pathway for electrons to travel to ground should a fault occur. Uh, the ground is a safety to protect the equipment from the fault conditions. The neutral and ground in a single phase 120 volt circuit, the white wire is a neutral, a conductor that carries current during normal operation. Neutral represents a reference point within an electrical distribution system. All of the current that returns from the hot leg is through the neutral wire. That is why the amperage reading should be taken from the neutral on a 120 volt circuit. Uh, you, there must be a wire, uh, ground wire ran all the way from the panel over to the furnace, um, just like the hot leg, uh, the hot and the neutral wire. Uh, those have to be ran from the panel over, so should the ground. 
It's a good idea to run the ground wire from the grounding screw to the grounding screw where the inducer motor is grounded because the paint on the furnace cabinet can act as an insulator. And uh, you can see, if you look, the ground wire coming off the inducer uh, and that wire is attached where that ends right there on the bare metal of the heat exchanger. Do not run a ground to the firematic and tie it off inside the junction box and then use MC cable jacketing as the ground from the junction box to the furnace. You will have grounding issues with high efficiency furnaces if you do that. Never use gas piping as an electrical ground. The same goes for electrical conduit pipe. Electronic circuit boards depend upon a good electrical ground to complete flame rectification. Reversing polarity or phase can cause problems in the completion of the flame rectification circuit, just as a bad ground will. So now we will go through how to test our ground. These tests can also be used on service calls where the ground is suspected of being the problem. Confirm proper grounding with measuring resistance test. Turn off electrical power to the unit. Set your meter to ohms. Measure resistance between the neutral and one of the furnace burners. Resistance should be 10 ohms or less. There's another way to do it also is here you see the line voltage neutrals. Uh, this block of terminals are all interconnected and we'll have several wires on them and an actual field application. And the low voltage thermostat wire connection block and obviously that will have wires on it too. Note that the low voltage has a common instead of a neutral. Common serves the exact same function for the low voltage side as the neutral does for the line side. You'll need your multimeter set to AC voltage. With the unit powered but sitting idle waiting for a call, measure the AC voltage between any of the line neutrals, spade terminals, and common thermostat terminal block on the control board as you see in the, in the uh, picture here. Voltage should read less than two volts, AC. Cycle the control so that the inducer and circulator blowers are operated. The voltage should not vary. An indication of a poor or partial ground is a varying voltage between line neutral and C. If you like the video, please hit the like button. And if you want to make sure that you get all of our uh, new videos as they uh, drop on the, on the uh, YouTube channel, uh, you please subscribe and uh, you can do that at the web address at the bottom of the screen here. Thanks for watching. And you can watch all again, watch all of our Taz Academy videos at the YouTube address on you see on your scheme screen. Thank you for watching this video.